This is our second of several videos discussing partial derivatives. In this video, we just want to work out some more examples using the rules of differentiation to calculate first partial derivatives. So here we're using a slightly different notation. We're using the subscript notation. So we want to find the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y for the function f of x comma y equals x cubed plus x squared times y cubed minus 2y squared. So let's start with the uh, partial with respect to x. We'll use the sum and difference rules to go ahead and uh, find the partial derivative one term at a time. Remember, the idea is when I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to x, I'll be treating y as if it were a constant. So in the first term, there is no y to be even concerned about. I just take the derivative of x cubed using the power rule. The y cubed in the second term, I consider that as a constant multiplier. So I just use the power rule with two f with x squared to get 2x y cubed as my partial derivative. And then in the third term, there is no x. So this whole term I consider as being a constant, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So I don't have to write the minus 0, but I just wanted to put that in there to emphasize. Then taking the partial with respect to y, again, we'll do it one term at a time. And I can see that in the first term, remember now x I consider as being a constant. So my first term, x cubed, I'll consider it a constant when I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to y, and the derivative of a constant is 0. In the second term, the x squared, I'll consider that a constant. And then I just use the power rule with y cubed to get 3x squared y squared. And then in the last term, I see I have a typo. Let me go ahead and make this is the partial with respect to y of 2y squared will just be using the power rule for y. So I don't have to write that 0. So this is cleaned up a little bit. All right, in the next example, we'd like to find all first partial derivatives of a function of three variables. So u is a function of x, y, and z. There's only two terms here, uh, but it looks like there could be some product rules in here. Let's just do it carefully, one partial derivative at a time. So we'll start with the partial derivative with respect to x. And again, we'll do it one term at a time. Now I can see in my first term, I have x multiplied by sine of x times y. So even though I'm treating both y and z as if they were constants, um, the first uh, function here, x, and the second function, sine of x, y, that's a product of two functions of x, so I'll need to use the product rule. So I'll take the partial with respect to x, partial of the first times the second, plus the first times the partial derivative of the second. Now in my second term, even though there's a product here, the, the second part, e to the yz, because I consider both y and z as constants, e to the yz is also a constant. So that's just a constant multiplier. So I will just get e to the yz. This is exactly the same as if I had the partial with respect to x of 5x. Well, that would just be 5 
is partial with respect to, to x of x e to the yz is just e to the yz. So let's work out in our product rule. The partial with respect to x of x is 1. So I just get sine xy. And then the partial with respect to x of sine xy, well, I'll have to use the chain rule. The derivative of sine gives me cosine, but then I'll have to take the partial with respect to x of what's inside, which is xy. And I still have the plus e to the power of yz. Now the partial with respect to x, remember y I treat as a constant multiplier. So that's just gonna give me a y. So I'm going to have sine xy plus xy cosine of xy plus e to the power of yz. And that's my partial with respect to x. Let's move on to the partial with respect to y. Now, I'm going to treat x and z as if they are constants, both x and z. So which tells me that this x in front of the sign is just a constant multiplier. Same thing with the x in front of the exponential. That's just a constant multiplier. And so uh, the sine of xy is a function of y. So I'll need to take its derivative. And e to the yz is also a function of y. But there's no product rule and when I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to y. So x is a constant multiplier. Derivative of sine is cosine. And then applying the chain rule, I'll have to multiply that times the partial derivative with respect to y of xy. And in the second term, x is just a constant multiplier, but I still need to use the chain rule. So it'll be multiplied times e to the yz times the partial derivative with respect to y of the exponent yz. So when taking the partial with respect to y, the x is a constant multiplier. So that's, I'll have an x from the chain rule and x from the original multiplier to get an x squared. And the partial with respect to y of yz is just going to be z. So I'll have xz times e to the power of yz in my second term. And finally, the partial with respect to z, and now I'm going to treat both x and y as constants. And I can see that in my uh, first term, there is no z at all. That is not a function of z. That is just a constant when I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to z. And so its derivative is going to be 0. Uh, and in the second term, I have a z in the exponent, but the x I treat as a constant multiplier. So I will need to use the chain rule, my constant multiplier of x times the derivative of the outside, which is e to the yz, multiplied times the partial with respect to z of yz. And that's just going to give me a y. So my partial with respect to z is going to be um, x, y, e to the y, z. So let's pause here. And before we try to do partial implicit differentiation, let's just remember regular single variable implicit differentiation. So we're going to try to find dy by dx using implicit differentiation. And the equation we have is e to the power of y equals xy plus y cubed. So there's no way we can solve this equation for y and explicitly compute the derivative. However, if we treat y as a function of x, so we have to keep that straight. y is not an independent variable. y is my output variable. y depends on x. It's a function of x. So uh, whenever I take the derivative, if, if a term has a y in it, I have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of e to the y be the derivative of the outside e to the y times the derivative of the inside, which is just d by dx of y. Now, in my second term, 
x is a function of x, y is also an implicit function of x, so I need to use the power rule, I mean, sorry, the product rule. So it would be the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And then in my last term, I'm just going to use the power rule for the outside, but since the inside is also a function of x, I'll need to use the chain rule and take the derivative of the inside. So the derivative with respect to x of y is just dy dx or y prime. The derivative with respect to x of x is just 1. So let me fill those out. I'm going to use the y prime. And then from here, it's just algebra. What do we do? We collect all of the terms of y prime on one side, factor it out, and solve for y prime. So now we have an equation e to the power of z equals x, y, z. z represents a function of x and y. z is a function of two variables implicitly. I can't solve this equation for z, but I can still use implicit differentiation to uh, find a formula for the partial derivatives. So let's find the partial with respect to x first. So I'm taking the partial of uh, both sides. So on the right hand side, just like I did in the previous example, z is a function of x and y. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule. The derivative to the outside is just e to the power of z. But since z is a function of x, I would need to take the partial with respect to x of z. And then on the right-hand side, I really should look at this as the product of x, y, and then times z, because x, y is a function of x and y, and z is a function of y. They're being multiplied together. I'm going to need to use the product rule. So I'll take the partial with respect to x of the first, multiply that times the second, add that to the first times the partial with respect to x, of the second. Now the partial with respect to x of z is just z sub x. So, and the partial with respect to x of xy is just going to be y. So I'll get this equation here. And then from here, it's very similar. It's algebra. I want to get everything that has the partial derivative, every term that has partial derivatives on one side. So the z sub x factor that out, and then solve for z sub x. Now, you know, this doesn't happen a lot, but I just noticed that when I was uh, working this out that there is, it is possible to even simplify this further because the original equation says e to the z is x, y, z. So if I replace e to the z with x, y, z, uh, I can go ahead and see there's a common factor of x, y, factor that out. And then I see that there's a form of 1, y over y. y is a, is a factor of the numerator. It's also a factor of the denominator. So that simplifies to being z over x parentheses z minus 1. All right, let's find the partial with respect to y then. Same kind of idea. We'll take the partial with respect to y both sides. Again, I need to use the chain rule when I'm finding the partial with respect to e to the power of z, since z is a function of y. And again, in the, I'm going to look at the right-hand side as the product of x, y times z. Both of those are functions of x and y, so I'll need to use the product rule there. So the partial with respect to y of the first times the second plus the first times the partial with respect to y of the second. So again, partial with respect to y of z is just 
uh, the partial of z with respect to y or z sub y and the partial with respect to y of x, y will just give me x. And so once I put those in there, it's just some algebra. I want to get to the, the z sub y all on one side, factor it out, solve for z sub y. And just like with z sub x, this is it doesn't happen all the time, but in this particular question, I can do a little bit more simplification. So that ends our second video on uh, partial derivatives. Stay tuned, and we'll look at a geometric interpretation of the partial derivatives.